All right, so let's look at a, a bout, well, three bouts that Max Heinzer did uh, in a team bout. And they, grand total, he fenced for pretty much under a minute. And obviously, right uh, after the fact, uh, it looks really good, right? And uh, you might be thinking, wow, maybe I should do this. Just remember, right, Max Heinzer is like born of chaos. He lives in it. He breathes in it. It's actually more comfortable, in my opinion, for him to just put someone in a chaotic position because he has dealt with those outcomes a million more times than uh, the people he's facing, right? So it puts them in his territory. Uh, that being said, right, if you are someone, right, then you're just like, oh, I'm going to backflip someone Heinzer style. You have not practiced it a million times like Heinzer did. Uh, but that being said, you can justify your backflip attempt saying you're trying to just uh, be in the chaos, right? But tactically, it makes sense, right? Uh, Kanan especially is a fencer that if he doesn't get time to set up, uh, and actually like that for a lot of the French, they don't get a lot of time to set up. They tend to melt down. Uh, but that being said, right, uh, these rush tactics are a bit of a gamble. But if they work, you look like an absolute genius. And if they fail, well, uh, well, you, you played your you played your hand fast, right? You went all in on the first blind. So uh, let's have a quick look here. Let's go through the bounce, see how this worked. It's right off the bat. Boom. Beat, beat. Now we're beating. All right, he doesn't. It's kind of a beat. And this is a bit of a Heinz race. Shows four, big four. Sweeps back in, goes straight in six. Gets it. Kanan is just caught sleeping. Oh man, I went too fast, right? Uh, and then here, yep. Yeah. So, this is something I noticed from Heinzer, but he could, like, I, I don't know if it's consistent. Uh, he, he's got interesting stance, but here, for some reason, I was feeling the sprint. And then see here, right, uh, Heinzer is very big on... Look at that, like, he's opening, right, he's into four, he's opening his sixth line. And then he just goes in. So right now, uh, about eight seconds of active fencing. So Kenan decides he wants to hopefully call out. Right, so here Heinzer had been going in. See, so kind of he opens up high, but however, it's not really into four. And instead of doing his six, he does an eight, and it's a single. Ten seconds of active fencing. Oh, that was an interesting double. So shows four, four, right? Beats four, six. Cannot actually get, oh man, barely gets the double. All right, so shows four, six again, straight. Cannon barely doubles with the back flick on the French grip. Max Heinzer knows it. 13 seconds of active fencing. Oh. Boom. So why does that work so well? Wow, so like, basically, Kenan would normally, right, he'd do a bit of a drawer pull to hopefully get something. No, I think he was going for a straight-up drawer pull, and he got called out. I think that's what it was. One. Yeah, he wanted to do drawer pull, but uh, he got he got face-planted instead. So, 14 seconds of active fencing. And a three-point lead. In the team bout, that's a lot. So now we're going back, now we're going, well, forward. To the fifth relay, 1912. You'd think, right, a guy like Yannick Borel. So Yannick Borel is a bit trickier because he's uh, equally like alpha on the strip. So, but still, this uh, really doesn't last long either. So let's have a look. So he gets called out right away. All right, big movements. Boom, Borel goes in.
So it goes in, big action. So right, that four, six, close the line. So when you have such a huge lead, right, obviously, especially in team bout, these doubles are huge. That's a big double. So watch how, right, Heinzer can kind of control forward. Goes all the way. He's sprinting back. Obviously, it's a little bit harder because he's like literally like just shuffling back. But Borel is forced to follow, obviously, right? He he needs the point. And such a big distance. Heinzer can kind of control the narrative. And then huge beats. Shows us. Right, you think back flick, big eight. A very small take into a double. Rushes him down again, same thing, right? Shows that four into six. Alright, four wind for the six. Rush down. This is very, very difficult to deal with, especially for a style like the French. You don't have time to analyze anything in front of you. Very difficult to deal with. Gets rushed down. Duck into a remise. Right, so it's admittedly a little lucky, but he's he's playing. He's playing to a, like the French are nervous. They want to make a comeback. Ah, so this is here, right? And so our opponent is being pressured. Wants to do something. A lot of times, people panic, counterattack. Heinzer reads this. Boom. Boom, and... Oh. So, right, this is here, what happened earlier. Right, Boral decides. He wants to right away go push him to the back. Hard stop. Remember what I said earlier about how when you do a huge distance pull, you can kind of control the narrative. And hard stop into duck. So... 14 So here we have 14 seconds in the first one this one we have 23 seconds uh, Then the French are obviously pissed and now again, right? So now We've kept up more or less the same lead I believe or actually no so the leads slightly smaller, but still a huge lead seven points a lot of people say oh, I'll just sit on this lead and I'll um, Yeah, I'll just sit on this lead and I'll double out not today sirs and ma'ams, if you're watching. Instantly rushes down. Fantastic work by the cameraman. But we can, at least we can see Max Heinzer's action. It's going to be that... That... Uh, four, six, not ready. Single. No room to breathe. Oh, come on, come on. Just big double. Let's see, Con. There's no way this is. Oh, he's just stuck on the bit. Everybody calm down. I don't think it's anything. Are they asking for video on this? Come on. Really? So there's a red card in here. Okay. Let's, let's look at it again. Let's look at it in real time. Mm. I don't think it's... I think it's a bit of a... A bit of a fall by Heinzer, but... You know. Basically impossible to manage this bout and control the distance. Control is happening. Good on Burden and not to follow this.
and they win. So right, obviously, it's not, it's not uh, like this kind of fencing, right, is high risk, high reward in a sense, right? Because he basically won the match in the first bout, uh, assuming his teammates can hold off, right? So it's tactically interesting because rushing can work. Uh, you just have to, you know, make it your own. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, right, go, go out to your club. You can try rushing, but... This needs to be with purpose. Don't just rush because if you feel like, like because you feel like it, do it because it's kind of on your on your global plan, right? You've got a plan. Uh, do it because it makes sense there. But uh, just in the moment, right? If it's not tactically right, uh, maybe right. If you see your opponent is stressed or something, they're tight. Yeah, try to rush them. If your opponent's super relaxed, rush them to make them tense. Something like that. So try to put a bit more meaning if you're gonna rush. But uh, here's an example on how I think tactically it was absolutely phenomenal. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys got, uh, got yourselves a good day.